The content of this video is for entertainment purposes and it does not always reflect my onions or preferences. We are playing Flat Out. Flat Out is a derby racing game. Let's start by creating a new profile. Just as I would with an RPG game, I'm going to take character creation seriously here, even though immersive roleplay is difficult in a car game. You know, character creation is limited to selecting a name. Let's just run with it anyway. I'll be Thor. Ah, role-playing man, role-playing. XX Hitman. We're getting there. X Hitman X. Perfect. A car is more than a mobility enhancing device. It's an extension of ourselves. Therefore, choosing the right ride is never simple. I possess 4,000 hard-earned dollars that I can spend however I like, as long as I spend it on one of these scrap heaps. The car I choose will be my main source of income too. There's no other way to make money in the world of flat out except for driving, unfortunately. These car designs bear some resemblance to actual muscle cars, but I can't place them. Except for this one, it resembles an old Ford Mustang. Perhaps the Finnish studio behind this game was inspired by Finnish cars. Oh god! Maybe not. That was alarming. Sorry for showing you that. Most Scandinavian nations are trash at manufacturing cars. So what do we choose? In order to stay true to my persona, I need something with strength yet elegance. Succinct. As X Hitman X. I'll be carrying out meticulous contracts that need to be performed in extreme detail and with utmost caution. Bullet looks good, but something draws me to this Mustang looking thing. It's big, it's bad, it's nothing like discretion, but perhaps the best solution to any Hitman contract is barging right through the front doors. I like it in any color as long as it's black, please. Next up before racing, I have to prepare my Hitman wagon for contract time. To the half abandoned tuning shop! What I'll be needing here is of course body kit for extreme impact potential. And the tires for uh, using the rest of my cash potential. So the ride's looking good. But I must admit that the number 15 is a bad fit for me. Should have been 47, if you know what I mean. Let's race. Since I'm a beginner, I have three choices. Beggars can't be choosers, right? <laughs> I'm not a beggar though. Please subscribe. I'll do Brad's pit crash. Racing to finish Hitman contracts is pretty easy. There are principles to adhere to. First off, you got to get Nitro by breaking stuff. Breaking stuff also means money, okay? Which is how the economy of Flatout works. It's basically break stuff, buy more parts, break more stuff, buy more parts, and so on. After procuring Nitrous Oxide, we'll identify the right target according to the contract. Then be humble. Extremely humble. Until you find the right time to strike. Sometimes the goals of a hitman. Seriously, come on man. Will fail to coincide well with the goals of the game. Agreeing with the positioning system is the only way to progress. Needless to say, I am having issues progressing. I wish the developers would take a hitman's needs into consideration when developing. Why not introduce a system of racing where every NPC driver that also turns out to be an enemy of shady corporate practice or an adversary of unethical but commercially lucrative politics gets a contract on their head? From there, you as a player can choose whether you want to race normally or take them out hitman style. That's what I call gaming. But it's not all grim in the world of racing. In race 2, I was skillful enough to rank second place behind a clothing brand. O'Neill. I did some research on this O'Neill. The research was less than fruitful. My key findings were that they make clothes that I would uh, hardly consider wearing, and they have unsavory names for their colors, such as plantation. Why not oak, sandstone, mustard, cognac, marigold, straw, or cedar? Finally, O'Neill uses a model that looks like baby-faced Patrick Swayze, which is an observation that I would categorize as being on the borderline between compliment and sarcasm. After collecting measly sums of money from my crashing endeavors, it's time to reinvent my tactics. I'm simply not getting those juicy contract kills that I was hoping for. To get the perfect contract kill, I have to lay low. Extremely low. 
So that's what I did. Seriously? It felt great getting in a strike like that. By conforming to the new tactic of laying low, extremely low, my future will hold great victories. Why change a winning formula, right? Guess what comes next? I lay- Oh, oh, oh. Damn! I must have miscalculated. Was I not low enough? I don't understand. Great errors lead to great defeat, in contract killer terms and in racing terms. I was beaten by a clothing brand, again! I shouldn't really whine that much though. O'Neill is just carrying out her own plan of expanding her clothing brand. She finances marketing campaigns by winning races at Brad's Sandpit. And I will not hold her great entrepreneurial spirit against her. After reflecting on my performance, it's becoming clear to me that the reason for my misfortune, both as a hitman and as a racer, is because of the car. The car is just wrong. The number is wrong too. Wrong numbers always cause issues, you know? Like when inserting the wrong pin code into your neighbor's alarm system. I'm moving up in the world though. I got myself a new ride. The Road King. It truly lives up to its name. Look at that handling! From now on, I will start using something called shortcuts. These will help me become a better racing car driver. And potentially, they can also be used to attack contracts from an unexpected angle. I'm certain that channeling energy from metal music will help me enjoy these shortcuts better too. The name of the song is A Baby With Two Heads, so I don't know what's going on, okay? I finally thought I had learned it all and seen it all, particularly after mastering the art of shortcuts. The realization was a fake, because here was all of a sudden Watatahu Town, the town of a million crashed bumpers. Every obstacle here provides me with a detrimental challenge. A police car? Hope your headlights are working, punk. A construction vehicle? Remember your seatbelt, kid. A bump in the road? Fly and spin and never come back. Ugh. This must be the only racing game in the history of video games where you cannot break streetlight poles without consequences. And look at my ride! It's impossible to perform my duties as a hitman in an inconspicuous way whilst driving a flaming turd on four wheels. After the dreadful experience at Watatahotata Town, I had to withdraw. When withdrawing, only one thing felt right. And that is bowling!